Hello my amazing creative friends, Oksanti here again and in this video we are going to be talking about how to design your own fabric. I'm going to show you step by step all the steps you need to take to go from an idea in your head and a vision to uh, holding your fabric in your hands just like I'm holding this one and this is uh, the example fabric that I'm going to show you how I designed and so stay tuned! How to design your own fabric step-by-step -step tutorial so uh, first of all what we are going to do is we are going to uh, come up with a topic for your fabric so it is important in this case to think what are you designing for is it going to be a scarf for you for example then you might consider uh, the colors of the clothing that you wear the scale of the artwork and general style that you like uh, if you, it's going to be a blanket for your baby, uh, then you might consider is it a boy or girl or maybe neutral colors and then uh, do you have a specific preference in the baby's room, bedroom for example, so that the, the blanket can fit right in. So these are def definite considerations that you want to consider. If you are thinking to creating a fabric for sale one day, then you might consider the industry that you are going to design it for for example kitchen towels or is it a, a clothing uh, item for who is it the clothing item this is definitely something that you are going to think about once you have the topic for your fabric uh, step two is to create your elements. Uh, we are. I'm going to show you the particular fabric that I created with floral elements and leaves and uh, I created the sketches for this um, fabric so that you can um, see how to start with these elements. The sketches can be very rough, you do not have to create them very, very detailed, they can be general outlines. This is the sketch that I was working uh, on on before I created the fabric in this that we are making in this video and uh, it is important to envision your elements separately you don't have to but it is very helpful when you envision your elements one at a time basically isolated on a piece of paper because this way you can combine and overlap them in many different ways so these elements are really really helpful uh, in the long run when you're developing your pattern collection so after we have our sketches done, we are going to be recreating them in Adobe Illustrator. So there are other ways to create your sketch, your uh, elements. And for example, you can use a Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop for that. So there's different, different ways, but I personally you like vector elements. Uh, so I use Adobe Illustrator. So the, here are the elements that I created based on the sketches that I showed you and this one was the first one and the leaves and then I created a few matching flowers directly in Adobe Illustrator so that I can uh, use them in the pattern and combine them all. There is definitely you can use a sketch or you can draw directly in Adobe Illustrator and for that it is very helpful to have a gra graphic digital tablet like a Wacom Intuos for example. All right, once you have your elements, I arrange the elements in the seamless manner. This is called a repeat pattern tile and this is basically a um, square and actually can be a different shape where every all the flowers are repeating. So you can see that this blue flower, for example, this blue flower is cut off over here and the rest of it is exactly repeated uh, over here. So it is all every the same with all of these elements. So this is very important and it is very makes the composition seamless. There are different ways how to achieve this type of composition and uh, among them is pattern tool in Adobe Illustrator. And I have my own system that is based on symbols which I teach uh, in this channel. All right. So this is how the end pattern is going to look like and the black line shows us the edge of the tile. And you, as because it is vector, you can zoom in and zoom out uh, your artwork. All right, so once you have your pattern made of the elements, 
you, you once you have your pattern you can use adobe illustrator as i did or you can also use photoshop or even inkscape but i do not recommend inkscape i haven't tried it myself but i wanted to include it just in case you want to try a free a solution but adobe illustrator and photoshop have their uh, a few days of uh, trial they are definitely professional uh, options all right once you have your pattern now it's important to save a jpeg file for to uh, the one that we are going to be using to uh, produce our fabric so we, for that we have our pattern tile uh, it is exactly positioned on the artwork is important and it is uh, in a seamless uh, design so this is basically how your fabric is going to look like once it's uploaded you can make it bigger repeat you can make smaller repeat you can save this particular repeat layout and then you uh, basically can preview how your fabric is going to look like all right and after you're done uploading to Spoonflower, it's time to select your fabric type and order it. Uh, let's see. So basically you choose your fabric type uh, under, under here, choose a fabric. And this is basically how you do it. And then you can choose to order test watch, fat quarter or how many yards you will need. Uh, by the way, I am not affiliated with Spoonflower. I am just a customer. Uh, I do not work for them or anything. So this is just my honest advice. How uh, th th This is the way how I order my own fabric for my uh, textile design business. All right. So this is how you do it. Uh, next up, what we are going to do is once you have your fabric, uh, you are going to get creative with it. It is super exciting to see your fabric in really produced in real life and to produce interesting things with it. This is the fabric that I uh, designed and I showed you in the video from sketch to vector and then into repeat and then into the uh, Spoonflower website. Here is the fabric that I created and I am so, so excited how it turned out. It's very nice and lightweight. I really, really like it. So uh, I think I'm going to make a nice spring scarf with it and I'm excited for that project. Um, so another option, the bonus option I wanted to show you guys is that you can post your fabric for sale on Spoonflower and design your pattern collection. Uh, on my channel, I talk a lot about creating repeat pattern designs in Adobe Illustrator and selling them online. Uh, so I have a lot of videos if you are interested in that. Uh, but it's definitely an option and I've had my shop for many years now and have been very satisfied with it. Uh, so this is definitely another cool thing to do with your fabric designs. So I created a bonus PDF guide for you guys because I know that these steps might be a little bit intimidating So uh, for the beginners. So I, th I thought to create a printable checklist, step-by-step -step checklist, so that you can refer to it easier um, and on your uh, process uh, of printing your own uh, fabric. By the way, there is also uh, different types of fabric creation. You, uh, This is a digital printing method, but you also can produce your fabric by hand by uh, creating the stamps, stamp-like stens or stencil-like uh, elements and then applying the fabric or you can paint and draw on your fabric directly so these are different types of uh, versions but this tutorial in particular is focused on the digital uh, printing uh, fabric method all right, so to receive this bonus PDF guide, it is free. I will post link down below to my blog post where you can request it and use it for your own fabric printing projects. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, please uh, like this video and comment below and also subscribe for more videos just like this one on the topic of textile design, uh, selling your repeat patterns online and Adobe Illustrator tips and tricks. Please share your fabric uh, with us on our community right here on this channel. All right, you guys, uh, I wish you the best of luck with your fabric collections. Bye.